Can we all get in the attitude of prayer? Service is about to start. Most gracious and loving God, we thank you. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Father, you are worthy to be praised. Father, we thank you. Lord, when we are unlovable, Lord, we just thank you. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, we thank you for this new month waking us up and starting us on our way to just see yet another day. Father, we thank you for the service that's about to go forward, oh God. Lord, move in this place and have your way. Lord, anything that is not of you, Lord, we rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Lord, we speak healing, we speak love, we speak joy and kindness, oh God. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for your spirit, Lord, that lives inside of us and breathes and moves. Lord, we thank you so much for this sunshine, Lord, and we just thank you. God, we are in a spirit of thankfulness. Lord, we just want to give you all the honor and the glory because you deserve it all. No other thing matters, Lord, right now but you. Lord, focus our hearts and our attention and our minds on you, God, just to hear exactly what you want us to hear on today. Lord, bless each and every one of us, Lord, and all the ones that are coming just to get excited to praise and worship and fellowship together. Lord, have your way. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with praise and thanksgiving. Let us praise him with music and song. Let us lift our hands and our hearts as we prepare to go to the Lord. Is there anybody happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Anybody happy that he woke you up this morning? Anybody grateful that you made it through the week? Anybody here to thank and praise God for stretching out your check for, for uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, refund checks and different things that come at just the right time, amen? amen. And, and, and if you didn't get that, that God will just find a way to make a way like he always does. As we prepare to start the service, we have some announcements we would like to share with you. First, we again want to thank everyone who has participated in the three informational meetings that we have had two that were on Zoom, and then one last Sunday after service. This May 17th meeting is coming up soon. We invite you to come and, and let your voice be heard. On May 17th, we'll have a congregational meeting immediately following the service. It will be a hybrid service, so if you would like to attend via Zoom, you should start contacting the office now. We will send more information out, but if you don't know Zoom, Talk to Sister Dominique so we can get you set up for training. Can anybody say amen? Because the last thing you want to do is fuss with your computer at the time when you need it the most. So uh, we just invite you to be prepared for that meeting and to participate with us and know that we're trying to do this and move in a direction in unity. And the African proverb that we've been sharing, if you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Let us go far together. Can anybody say amen? Amen. amen. And for those of you who have uh, graduating seniors, um, the deadline, there's, there's a few that are listed in the, um, in the announcements. If you're at home online, they should be showing online, but feel free to contact the office if you don't have access to the announcements. There's the uh, PCUSA scholarship that, um, it's got the link on here from the presbyterianmission.org. There's another one through the Presbyterian Mission Agency um, and they've got an additional supplemental award for people of color. That deadline, that deadline is May 16th. So for the ones that we are advertising from the Presbytery, the, um, it looks like the middle of May are the deadlines for those. And then uh, here at College Hill, we're working on um, getting our, our seniors recognized and, and applying for scholarships through us. So if anybody has any graduating seniors or, or, or grandchildren, somebody say amen. You want to be sure that they meet these deadlines and get their help. Announcement about one calls. When you receive a one call from the church, 
please either let it go to voicemail or press the option that allows the one call message to be saved. This way you can listen to it as many times as you'd like and be sure to get the full message from the church. A lot of times what happens is um, people just uh, don't let it go to voicemail or they listen to it and don't re-listen to it and then they have to call the church. They want to know what's going on and if Sister Dominique's not there, they're afraid they missed out on something. So please let it go to voicemail or hit replay to be sure that you're getting all of your information. Um, there's National Day of Prayer on May 5th. Um, looks like the Presbyterian Church of Hamilton is having a prayer bre breakfast. Um, that should be uh, May 5th. Maybe Wednesday or Thursday? Thursday? Amen. So if you're interested in that, that's at the courtyard by Marriott at 715. So reach out to them if you're interested. Also apply to be a community investment fund grant reader. More information here to apply for that. Um, Grow with your neighbors. The College Hill Community Garden on Park Hill has available plots for $7. Contact Diane Wellborn, and the number listed is 937-277-3335 to reserve your spot in case you don't have room for a, a uh, garden in your own yard, but you would like to do it uh, with the rest of the community. You're invited to do that. The deacons have a request. If you have a stash of greeting cards that you've received free in the mail, the deacons can use them. They have a very active card ministry and ask that if you don't mind donating those unused cards, please do so. Amen. Now, um, we have been announcing here, and I don't, I'm not exactly sure how it happened, but I just want to get it fixed. We said we would be relaunching our van ministry to start effective the, the first Sunday in May. And my understanding is... We weren't ready on May. Now, I don't know why we weren't ready, but the, the word says, be ye ever ready. Amen? So whatever we have to do, let's be sure the van is up and running. And if you are in need of a ride in the van, you need to be in touch with the office by Friday at 2 p.m. We don't know to pick you up unless you tell us, and then our job is to be sure that it's running. So if you or somebody you know needs rides, please be sure to refer to that. Um, Next, uh, you all remember, next Sunday is what? What's next Sunday? Mother's Day. All right, all right. If you haven't got your cards, your flowers, your food starting to be prepared, it's time to work on that. But remember, the doors, the physical doors to College Hill will be closed on that day. But they will be open right down the block. You can walk there. Uh, Dr. Carter walked here when he preached with us and worshiped with us. Amen. So on Mother's Day at 1130, say Zion Baptist. Zion Baptist. Mother's, Day. Mother's Day. 1130. 1130. We're going to go all worship together. Can anybody say amen? Can anybody say amen? I mean, that's a wonderful way to celebrate, to be with another community of faith and share and celebrate mothers in an incredible day. And so we hope you will be a part of that. Also, the last thing is we are uh, beginning to, as the numbers have been dropping, we have been meeting and, and session has blessed to begin to relax COVID protocols. Can anybody shout hallelujah? So here's what's going to happen. Um, there, there'll be more information that you'll see on our website and different uh, communications that we will give. But what we want to let you know is the every other pew is going away. Okay, you keep your masks on. But we're opening up additional pews as the church is filling up. We really didn't want to send people downstairs. And as long as we're still wearing masks, then it should still be all right. So um, there will be other things that are going to change, and we'll let you know on those. But that's the primary thing to really pay attention to is that the, uh, we'll begin to open up all of the pews for everyone. So it might even happen today, depending on what the crowd is like. But we wanted to let you know in advance that. And, and we're staggering people as we open up the pews. So uh, chances are you won't have anybody sitting directly in front of you, but over to the side of you in the next row. Is everybody all right with that? Okay. Is anybody else hot but me? Is it just me? It's just me. All right, all right. Then I won't ask for fans yet. But with that, we're going to go ahead and start the service. Sister Quanteria, won't you greet the people with us? And I believe that we will have, who is our, our Spanish liturgist today? Sister Maria. All right. 
Oh, wait a minute. Sister Diane Harris is accepting donations to Central States University's Invincible Marching Marauders in honor of her daughter, Samisha, who would be celebrating her 50th birthday. Sister Diane and her family are holding a 5K walk for Samisha at DeWeese Park, 3509 DeWeese Parkway. This is on Saturday, May 7th at 11 a.m. Samisha, Samisha was a College Hill member, was a Central State University graduate, and a member of the Invincible Marching Marauders. So you are invited to join Sister Diane and her family at DeWeese Park for the casual walk, or you may give her the CSU donation directly. The Harris family appreciates the love and support shown and will joyfully share the total amount raised after the walk. May 7th at 11 a.m. at DeWeese Park. Amen. Amen. Good morning and buenos dias. Yes. Buenos dias. Yes. Buenos dias. yes. It's now time for our greeting. Welcome to the joyful. We rejoice with you. Welcome to the tired and weary. Come and take your rest. Welcome to the lonely and left out. May you find community among us. Sean bienvenidos todos los que están gozosos, nos regocijamos con ustedes. Sean bienvenidos todos los que están cansados, vengan y descansen en Dios. Sean bienvenidos todos los que se sienten solitarios y abandonados, que se sientan acompañados y como parte de una comunidad entre nosotros. Welcome to the foreigner, to the stranger, to the refugee. May you find safety here. Welcome to every nation, every race, every orientation, every identity. May you find hospitality here. For the God who delights in all of creation is in our midst. Sean bienvenidos los extranjeros, los refugiados, que encuentren seguridad aquí en este lugar. Sean bienvenidos los que llegan de cualquier nación raza, orientación e identidad, que, que puedan sentir nuestra hospitalidad, porque el Dios que se deleita en toda su creación está entre nosotros. College Hill is a multicultural family of faith, which welcomes diversity in our worship, in our ministry, in all the world. We hope you find something in our prayers and praise and our music, our ministry, that makes you feel a part of our family, and most of all, God's family. All are welcome here. Amen. College Hill is a family multicultural de fe que acoge la diversidad de nuestra adoración, en nuestro ministerio y en todo el mundo. Esperemos que encuentren algo en nuestras oraciones y alabanzas, en nuestra música o ministerio que los haga sentir parte de nuestra familia y sobre todo parte de la familia de Dios. Todos sean bienvenidos y bienvenidas. Amen. Amen. And one thing that I forgot to announce as I look at, um, as we plan on going to the visitors, um, we have brother George Brown up in the balcony who is translating for us again. You all wave to brother George. Amen, amen. We thank him for continuing to be here with us. I think this might be his third or fourth Sunday. So after service, um, our uh, members of our Hispanic ministry, anybody associated with that, are invited downstairs to the fellowship hall for an opportunity to speak with Brother George yourself, ask him questions as we uh, consider how he might be able to join us in more ways than just translation here at College Hill. And so we want people to ask him questions and get to know him and make him feel welcome. Well, can anybody say amen? amen? Amen. With that, are there any uh, visitors that would like to be recognized today? Any visitors that would like to be recognized? See a lot of familiar faces. All right. Okay. Seeing none, then you all, we already start. Greet each other with the peace of Christ. We say the peace of Christ be with you. In or in Spanish, Spanish, says, la paz de Cristo esté amen. contigo. Amen, amen. Peace to everyone. You do this. Jesus forever. Wave to the cameras. We're not here by ourselves. 
We're happy to see you. God loves you, and so do we, and there's nothing you can do about it. All right, amen. Um, welcome, Dr. Williams. Always a pleasure to have you with us, especially on First Sundays, who's going to lift up our Old Testament scripture reading and open us in prayer. Thank you, Pastor. I just feel blessed every time I walk through the door. <laughs> I had to give that testimony. <laughs> I just got to walk through the door into this temple, and I am blessed. This morning's Old Testament scripture comes from Psalm 30, 1 through 5, and has been prayed and cried by many of God's children. I will extol you. O oh Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O oh Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. Yes. O oh Lord, you brought up my soul from shield, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you, his faithful foes, and give thanks to his holy name, for his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. In College Hill, this has been the testimony of many of us. Weeping may linger for the night, but it is joy. It is joy that comes with the morning. It is joy that will come with the morning. To God be all the glory. To God be all the glory. At this time, let us go to the throne of prayer. And ushers, we have somebody at the door. Breathe the breath of new life into us, O Lord, that we may fully feel the power of your love and the awesome glory of the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Prepare us to receive your blessing and then to go from this place to be a blessing to others in your name. Amen. And amen. Won't you join us as we praise the Lord together? Is anybody happy this morning? If you're not, you need to get that way. Amen. Don't wait until the preaching starts. Don't wait until the praying starts. Don't wait until, until the singing starts to praise the Lord. But we invite you to praise the Lord with us. Clap your hands, raise your hands, shout whatever you want to do to give glory to the Lord. Because if the rocks will cry out, if we won't do it, don't let them do it on our behalf.
we going to have church today? Anybody ready to have church today? Anybody willing to, ready to celebrate the Lord? It's not about us. This is about him. Take your mind off of you for a minute and think about the wondrous goodness and grace of the Lord and all that he has done for you. That's what we're here to do. We're here to praise the Lord. We're here to give him his due because we get so busy during the week, caught up in all of our stuff. Sometimes we forget just to praise the Lord. Amen. Ooh, hallelujah. But as we move into the presence of God, and I always say that, and I don't want to be misunderstood, God is everywhere, amen? But there are certain times that we set aside to move and, and, and put God at the forefront of our minds and our hearts to get rid of any distractions, to move in his presence, to try to get ourselves right and in line with God's will and God's work. So that's what I mean when we move into the presence of God. When we sit back and enjoy his glory, when we bask in all that he's done, the sacrifice that he's given for each and every one of us, then it makes us pause and think how we're not necessarily worthy. I shouldn't even say not necessarily. We're not worthy of all that he has done for us. Amen. And for that, we confess. We confess our sins, not as often as one to another as we should, but we do try to confess them before God. So won't you pray with me as I pray with us our prayer of confession. We rejoice in the wonder of your resurrection, O Christ. But then we tend to sink back into our old ways of thinking, behaving, and responding to people's needs. We can dance with the angels and all humankind on Easter Sunday. But the days following the resurrection can cause us to slip back into apathy or despair. Forgive us when we are so easily become distracted by our own cares and worries that we ignore the needs of others around us. Forgive us when we forget your power and love for us. Charge us up, O oh God. Set our hearts to dancing. Give us a spirit for rejoicing, willing hearts and hands for helping, and voices for praising you forever. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and let the church say amen. 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 College Hill, in our words of assurance, we're going to continue to do what our words of assurance to do because we've already started. Yeah. Our words of assurance say sing, shout, rejoice. Yeah. Jesus calls us to serve because of yeah. his love for us. Uh -huh. He believes in us and all the gifts we've been given. Do not be afraid. Christ is with us always and his grace and mercy endure forever. Amen. To God be all the glory. Amen. Amen. Amen and hallelujah. Praise God that he doesn't leave us where we are. Amen. Picks us up, cleans us off, dusts us off, and treats us like we've never done wrong. Loves us like we've always been faithful. Maybe... Maybe, yes, yeah, so it is all grace, but maybe he gives us all that in hopes that we'll see what he does for us. Amen. We might do it for somebody else, and we might live in a way always with an attitude of gratitude for the things that he has done. It's time to praise the Lord for an opportunity to give. Can anybody praise the Lord for an opportunity to give? <laughs> Hear the word of the Lord. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all of the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. 
we're reminded that you know in, in, in biblical times what people what people gave often was not uh, coins and bills it was uh, whatever they had it was out of their gardens out of their harvest it was out of the their herds they gave whatever they had and they brought it to the house of the Lord to make sure that not only did the priest have something to eat and the priests were cared for and the house was taken care of, but for those that didn't have enough, they were provided for also. You know, we talk about um, the government and welfare. The church was the original way to take care of people who didn't have. And we still exist to do that, to help out each other and people around us. So we bring our best before God in recognition that all that we have is an inheritance from God. In celebration of the bounty that God has provided, let us give generously as we collect today's offering. Remember, today we will have our first fruits offering. And so if there, uh, somebody should come around with a separate basket, that will be following our regular tithes and offerings that the first fruits uh, will be gathered also. That money goes directly to one of our local food pantries. Um, and it uh, goes out at the, we take it out of the first of the month and that's the usual time that we do that. Rarely do we have more than one offering. I prefer to do just one. But we do do that because we want anybody to set any special amount aside for the food pantry that you would like. For those that are present, we ask that you prepare your offering now. For those worshiping online after the service, you may send it directly to College Hill Church, 1547 Philadelphia Drive, Dayton, Ohio, 45406. Or you can give electronically through our Faith Life app. On our Faith Life, you can give three ways, I think. There we go. Electronically, um, you can go to faithlife.com and search for College Hill Community Church. You can text the word GIVE in the amount to 937-230-6530. Or you can actually download the app and search for College Hill and verify the address of 1547 Philadelphia Drive. Regardless of how you give, we thank you for your faithfulness and support of this church. And in thanksgiving to God, I'll turn you over to the directions of the ushers. Sister Linda and Sister Paula will be collecting our tithes and offerings. And then Brother Larry Holler will be coming behind with the basket for our first fruits. And while we do that, what are we going to do? Worship and praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all all know that by now. Anything we do, we're going to praise God as we do it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, most holy one, for blessing me and everyone else here. We have a habit of thinking that it's only us, Lord, but you love each and every one of us. Every person here is blessed, Lord, and we thank you. So, Lord, we ask your blessings upon the givers and those who wanted to give. We ask your blessings upon the gifts. Lord, may, may they be stretched and multiplied like you did the loaves of, of bread and the fish, Lord, that it's enough for everyone who needs it. Lord, we know that we can't beat you giving, and we know that as we give, Lord, you give back to us. So, Lord, continue to bless this church, continue to bless this congregation, continue to bless this community, and, Lord, let us help one another until it stretches across the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. With that, do we have any nursery-aged children to go to the nursery? Ages 1 through, Sister Deborah, 1 through what? 1 through 5. 1 through 5, anyone want to go with Sister Deborah? Got one, all right. Amen. And with that, I think they got a little something to share with us to bless us as we prepare for the proclaimed word of God. May the music open up our ears and our hearts that we don't just hear what thus saith the Lord, but we do it also. Joy we share 
Anybody know that song? You ever really think about what it says? He walks with me. He goes with us wherever we are. We're never by ourselves. He walks with us. And he talks with us. If we just listen. Don't you hear him? Wherever we go in different situations, he's right there. And then the real joy is, and he tells me that I am his own. That you are his own. And that's not like a possessive sort of, you're mine. That's a, that's a be assured that you belong to me. I'm holding on to you. I'm with you wherever you go. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, we thank you that not only do you sit high and look low, but that you're called Emmanuel. God is with us. So Lord, we thank you for walking with us, not only in our dark places, not only in our gardens of sorrow and despair, but you're with us on our beautiful sunny days and you celebrate with us and you, and you laugh with us and you shout with us, but also you cry with us and you hold us that even though weeping may endure for a night, joy does come in the morning so lord as we come to 
this garden. Walk with us. Talk with us. Remind us that we are yours and that you are ours. And Lord, let us heed the words that you say, that we don't just hear them, but we do them also. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. Amen. kind of want to stay right there, but uh, the Lord has a word for his people on today, and if it feels like I'm coming through the, the airwaves and grabbing at you, if it feels like I'm walking down to your pew and whispering in your ear, just know that it's not me. It's the Spirit of God, because when I speak, if I'm doing what I'm supposed to, they're not my words. They're the words of our God that he would have us receive. So in Matthew chapter 5, we find Jesus giving his famous Sermon on the Mount. And after he lists the Beatitudes, the, the blessed are thous and, 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 and uh, thighs and, and, and those ways that you can be blessed and how and all these various scenarios that he gives, he proceeds further to expound on some additional topics such as anger, resentment, forgiveness, and reconciliation. I invite you to stand for the reading of God's holy word in the, in the gospel of Matthew chapter 18 verses 23 through 25, and then the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 6, verses 37 through 38. Hear now a word from the Lord. Oh, I gave her the wrong scripture. You all forgive me. Matthew 5, 21 through 26. I changed scriptures at the last minute. So just close your eyes. The second one will be the correct one. Close your eyes and hear now a word from the Lord. From Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 through 26. The word says, You have heard it said, You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult or verbally abuse, is what another text says, if you insult or verbally abuse a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. Then Jesus said, so when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother or sister and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. Then in Luke, Jesus expounds on this concept of what some people would call karma. Even though karma is about how your actions can affect you in the afterlife. That's a, a Buddhist term that says what, ha what you do now will affect you later as you go on into another life. That's the, that belief. Well, we use karma, but in a different way. Car in, in the way Jesus also uses it, that, that karma or, or the way that your actions can affect you can not only affect you in the afterlife, but Jesus talks about how our words and our actions can boomerang back to us in this life as well. So he says in Luke 6, 37 through 38, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not judge other folk and then you will not be judged. Do not condemn, 
and you will not be condemned. He says, forgive and you will be forgiven. But not only that, given it will be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. I'd like us to consider the topic, you get what you give. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You get what you give. A lot of times we use that scripture, you know, a good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over will be put in your lap. We use that for giving, and we mean financially, and, and, and it applies for that also. But in the spirit of what Jesus was talking about, you will get back even more than you give out in how you treat one another. And that's a scary thought because if you sent out something that was bad but maybe not so bad, by the time it comes back around to you, you have no idea what's coming. If you recall last week, we, we talked about two women who went before King Solomon because they were fighting over a baby. Because one woman's baby had died and the other woman's baby had lived. And the one whose baby died took the baby from the other woman while she was sleeping and she laid her dead baby with the other woman as if it was hers. Then, of course, a fight ensued and King Solomon was asked to judge between both of them. And King Solomon, showing the incredible wisdom that God had given him, said that he would cut the baby in two and give half to each mother. But before that could happen, one of the women said, no, give the baby to the other woman in order to save him. At which point, Solomon announced that she was the mother because she had shown love and compassion for the baby. And the, the baby was returned to her, and everyone was in awe of the king's wisdom. Now, while I was very impressed at how the king handled that very difficult situation because truly I don't know if I could have came up with something quite that clever. I might have just taken the baby for myself. I don't know. But, but, but the incredible wisdom was shown of what God had given the king. But I thought, once, once I thought about it some more, I thought the, the conflict was not fully resolved. It felt unfinished. Why, you might ask? Because even though the woman's baby had been returned to her, there was still a problem between the two women. Think about it. That didn't just go away. How were they supposed to go back to the house that they both lived in, knowing that one woman was grieving greatly over the loss of her baby? And the other woman likely held resentment that her friend had claimed her baby as her own. See, just because a problem gets solved does not necessarily remove the hurt, the pain, or the resentment that comes from being wronged in the first place. To be quiet in here because I know everybody's got some stuff that we don't like to talk about it. But what do you do when a problem is resolved and virtually everybody seems satisfied, but you're still stuck in the pain? How do you get past the wounds that other people ignore, can't see, or simply want you to forget? Can anybody remember being hurt? It didn't even have to be recently. It could be years ago. You ever think about something and get mad all over again? Look at me, 10 years ago, and you start thinking about it, you start getting all upset. It, it, it's good not to go back and revisit some things because sometimes you're just taking the scab off of a wound that you thought was healed. I got a text from somebody the other day who had treated me really, really bad, and her mother had passed away, and she reached out to me to let me know that her mother passed away. And I, at first, I was angry to receive the text. I said, why would she text me? And then she said, my mother was so fond of you, and I know that you were fond of her. 
So I just wanted to let you know. But the thing was, I didn't even realize until the woman texted me that I was still angry about the things that she had done. It's amazing how we can hold on to stuff that we can't seem to get past. People go on with their lives like everything's okay and you're stuck there. Just, I can't believe that he, I, I, I can't believe she, and you can rehearse it and rewind it and go over and over again in your life and you can stay stuck right there in the pain. Both of these women had to still be dealing with unresolved hurt or anger. Run from, the, run from the woman losing her baby initially, and I think she was probably mad at herself because, after all, she was the one who had rolled over on the baby. It wasn't her fault, but I know that she had to be holding that pain of something that she didn't mean to do that had hurt somebody else. And she took that anger against herself, against her friend. And so the friend was had to still be angry about having her baby taken away from her, stolen so that she had to fight to give him back. She almost lost him completely. And I had to ask myself, where was the wisdom of Solomon when it came to helping these women heal? And then I realized wisdom is one thing. Healing and forgiveness, that's something else. And both of those things, Healing and forgiveness are things that you can only do for yourself. Nobody can heal your hurt or pain. No one can forgive for you. That's something that not even the great king Solomon could do. So after Solomon had done his part, he could bask in the people who admired his wisdom, and that was great. But the trouble that began at the women's house, would still be waiting for them when they returned home. And that's what made me think about the scripture in Matthew that Jesus talks about because he, he, he went past the surface wrongs of people and he began to deal with the people's hearts. Because you see, it's easy, or at least it should be, to see someone guilty when it involves something like murder. For Jesus stated, you've, you've heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable of judgment. That should be very easy to decide. If someone is killed by someone else, you often have a crime that can be witnessed by others and or proven in court for evidence. Now, for some reason, this scripture must have been ignored in certain circumstances because judgment wasn't dispensed to those that tortured and killed Emmett Till. Judgment wasn't sought for the many lynchings and murders that occurred across our nation and still do today. This scripture must not apply to many of the black lives that don't seem to matter or some of the brown lives that we mistreat or some of the other lives of immigrants and people that are not like us. But Jesus here wasn't concentrating on those tragic and horrible wrongs against humanity. Jesus was talking a bit about the things that we as people of faith often want to overlook. I'm not going to get any amens today. That's all right. I'm going to preach to the curtains. See, the, the wrongs that we commit against each other or that are committed against us that often go unseen or ignored because there's no visible carnage left behind. Jesus is talking about those verbal insults and assaults, the mistreatment of people. It's showing disrespect and dishonor to people that we're supposed to be calling brother and sister. And just in case you're wondering, who is your brother and sister? Just like they asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Somebody might say, well, who is my brother and sister? Romans 8.28 says, we though many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. That's what makes us brothers and sisters in Christ. We are all bound through him. See, we don't call you bruh just out of slang. I don't call my sisters sisters, not sisters, right? I call them sisters. I don't call them that because they're my sisters by blood. 
but to call someone who is not related to you your brother or sister is a term of respect and love. Can anybody say amen? Well, you won't call somebody you hate your sister. You won't call somebody you don't like your brother. When you do that, it's a high term of love and respect, and usually one only reserved for those that we approve of. See, you know, I'll tell you, I'll just share some, you know, but I... <laughs> I used to work for Reynolds and Reynolds, and I would go out sometime with a friend of mine, and it's relevant that she was white, okay? I would, I'm black. And so we would go out, and she, so she, we would go out, you know, to lunch or something. We'd be walking down the street, and somebody would nod to me or something like that. She's like, do you know them? It's like, uh-uh. She's like, do you have some secret thing going on? <laughs> I said, that's my sister. Oh, you're related? No, that's my sister. That's my sister. So I'm, you know, I meant that's my sister, right? I didn't have to know you to know you my sister. Now, I also called her my sister, which that was a high compliment because when you cross over races to sisterhood, that's a real compliment right there. That's a real, that's usually reserved for only the people that you really like. But to call someone who is not related to you, your brother or sister, not only is it a term of respect and love, but whether we realize it or not, that comes from the Bible. So when you refuse to acknowledge a person of faith as your brother or sister, you are turning your back on Christ. People at churches have often told me that it's new to them to call someone brother or sister. See, I do that to remind myself especially when things aren't going right, that there's some things I won't say to you because you're my brother or sister. See, I, I, sometimes I need that reminder to know that no matter how much we might get on each other's nerves, there's a certain amount of love and respect that should exist among us because we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And it makes me wonder what their pastors have been teaching them that they would find this strange. Because throughout the New Testament, the term brother and sometimes sister, when they included us, right? The, the, this term occurs just a little under 500 times. Saints, we are brothers and sisters in Christ and therefore are called to show love for one another. By calling each other brother and sister is to acknowledge we are all part of the same family and the same body. God being our father and mother makes us children of God and therefore siblings. So those of you who say, I'm an only child, you're lying. We all got brothers and sisters. That's why Jesus said in this passage, but I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult or verbally abuse a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, and that's probably a lot nicer than some of the words we could use, right? But he said, if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. Did anybody read? Turn to your Bibles. I mean, am I making this up? This is what Jesus said. Jesus wanted us to know a few things here. We're not talking about your enemies, right? See, not that it's okay to abuse them either because it's not. Jesus said to pray for your enemies, to love your enemies, right? But, but, but here Jesus was getting personal. He was saying you cannot mistreat another woman or man of faith, your brother or sister in Christ, and not bring on the wrath of God. See, we don't like to talk about that often. We want to always talk about, oh, Jesus, the Lamb of God. The sweet, loving Jesus that died for our sins. But we got, you cannot ignore there's a side of God that you don't want to touch. There's a, you know how you, you, you knew when you had gone too far with your parents? See, I, I might be able to not do what my mother asked once. Maybe twice. But when that, she got that look on her face or that sound in her voice, I, I never wanted to see it again. And so that's the way it is with God. God loves us. But there are some things that we should not do because he doesn't like it. And not only does he not like it, he doesn't like it because he knows that it hurts the other person. 
So there's some things that you've got to know that if you do it, you are bringing on the wrath of God. So if you have something against somebody or somebody has something against you, you better get it together quick. Because if you cannot forgive or ask to be forgiven, you will have trouble with God. These two women that we talked about, they may have received resolution of the problem of what to do with the baby, but they did not resolve the problem of what to do about how they felt about each other. Now, had Jesus been the mediator, I have no doubt that he would have addressed the importance of forgiveness to move forward toward healing and reconciliation because no problem is solved until that happens. You can walk around and smile that little smile that you don't really mean that never makes it up to your eyes, right? And you can give those Christian greetings and you can be frenemies if you want to. But see, God knows your heart, right? And don't think you're really fooling anybody else all that much by pretending that you like somebody that deep in your heart you are scheming and, and upset, resentful against. But unfortunately, as people of faith, we rarely concentrate on reconciliation. We rarely hold each other accountable to the importance of forgiveness. Because church folk can hold on to a grudge like a purse full of cash. You cannot pry it from our hands. That's, that's my grudge. That's mine. I earned it. You can't take it from me. We will wrestle you down to the floor before we let go of our grudges or our resentment or our anger or our self-righteousness. Have I gotten to yours yet? <laughs> See, I do. I, I don't, uh, Dr. Williams, you might have to preach next week. They might not let me come back. See, we, we, we like to think that we're living right. You know, we try not to steal, kill, or lie if we can help it. We try to avoid what we consider the major sins. But we ignore those things that we want to hold on to, justifying ourselves by saying that they're no big deal. But according to Jesus, they are. Saying whatever you want to say to people and holding on to bitterness and resentment in your heart is detestable to God as some of those things that we would never do. You say, I, I never killed anybody. I never, I, I never committed adultery. I, I never lied. You lied, probably lied when you said that. But you say, I never did this. I never did that. Knowing that we're holding something against someone, unable to let it go. Mad at them or know that they're mad at us, so then we can be mad at them because they're mad at us. You know, we're the king of who started it first, right? If you didn't start it first, you got the right to hold on to it as long as you want to. That's why Jesus said, so when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, didn't even say if you did something. If you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First to be reconciled to your brother or sister and then come and offer your gift. Don't come up here for communion. Now, I'm not going to stop you. I'm just warning you. Don't come up here for communion accepting the body, the body and blood of Christ forgiveness and redemption of your sins unless you are willing to forgive others of theirs. See, y'all thinking, should I take communion today? <laughs> it doesn't have to necessarily be this instant, but it can start in your heart, can it? Because this is a hard concept to grasp. And as pastors, including myself, we often do not do a good enough job of stressing that, yes, Jesus died for our sins. However, salvation does not give us a license to willfully continue sinning. You can't talk about somebody behind their back and think that God does not hear you. You cannot hold anger and resentment against what someone said or did to you and think God's going to look over your stuff. And you cannot disrespect, 
demean, and demoralize people and think that you can get away without repenting and apologizing. If you're wrong, admit it and humble yourself before the person that you wronged and before God. And even if you're right, you have to forgive the person who wronged you. That's what humility is. You all know, um, well, the, most of you know that when I was in college, I was in a relationship that was both verbally and physically abusive. And I don't need to go back over that whole story, but I can, I can say that I've been hit. I've been kicked in the face. I've been spit on, pulled by my hair, choked. You name it, that happened in that relationship by somebody who was supposed to love me. And the last time I saw him after that, after that last incident was, oh, I didn't even see him, was to put out a warrant, I mean, to sign something to authorize a warrant for his arrest. Now, I tell you that because fast forward, and if I told you this, so you just I'll tell you again, okay? So, when I told you when I was older, I was baptized in my early 20s. Before I was baptized, I was sent to Colorado to, collect, to, to receive an award. And they um, made us sign up for something they called, a, that was back when there was a Bank One. I don't know who they are, U.S. Bank now or somebody. But anyway, Bank One Olympics, as they called it, the first time ever. And um, they said that I had to participate in these Olympics. This is not part of the story. I mean, this is not part of the story, but I got I to gotta share it to get to the other part of the story. So the first event of the night is at the top of a mountain. They said that we were going to toboggan down the mountain. We're both, each of us on the toboggans, I think it's about six or seven on, on this one and six or seven on the other. Young lady and I are sitting on the front of one. They push us off down the top of the mountain. Didn't tell us how to steer or where the brakes were. And next thing we knew, there was a boulder coming up right in front of us, and we couldn't, we couldn't miss it, so we hit it. So all that, all that to say, at the time when I, and maybe that it was part of the part that made me seek God, amen? <laughs> but I decided to be baptized. But when I decided to be baptized, I was on crutches. So when the minister called us down, you know, if you want to give your life over to Christ, you know, when I do the invitation, that's why to invite you to Christ, uh, if not for your first time again, because some of us need to be invited back. But anyway, um, I, I, came, I went down. I, I've shared, I think, some of that with you. You know, I'm down there. I'm crying. And, you know, everything's, you know, uh, just it's a beautiful day, overwhelmed by just emotions and just giving myself over to Christ. Then I go back and I sit down in my seat and go through the rest of the service and because I'm on crutches, and there's, at, this was at New Salem uh, Church in Columbus, huge, thousands of people go to that church. So I just stayed in my seat because I was on crutches, and I didn't want to keep people from, you know, waiting on me to go. So I'm sitting in my seat. <clears throat> Did I tell you all I just got saved? Did I mention I just got saved, right? Just gave my life over to Christ. Out of the corner of my eye, I see this demon. I mean this man, my ex-boyfriend, demon to me, man to somebody else, right? I see him come slowly around the back of the church and start moving over to the other side where I was sitting. I know this man is not coming where I am. I know that this man, he's got to be going to the restroom. He's got to be going someplace. He cannot be coming to my row. And here he came, walked on up, and said, I, I see that you hurt yourself, and I'm sorry to hear that you hurt yourself. And I'm thinking to myself, as many times as you've hurt me, he said, I'm sorry to hear that you hurt yourself, and I hope you're all right, and I'm so happy for what happened to you today. And I just want to let you know I'm praying for you. And he walked away. And I thought to myself, what a God we serve. <laughs> Did the preacher just get done talking about forgiveness and you walked this man right up the aisle to me freshly, freshly trying to give my life over to Christ and put me to a test like that? 
After a couple more times of attending church, he asked me if I would meet him. And I agreed to meet him, to hear what he had to say. And we went out, you know, I made sure it was out in a public place, very busy. And I'm, we met, we had dinner, and he apologized for all the things that he had done to me and how sorry he was. And I forgave him, only to find out a little bit later that he really only apologized hoping that we would get back together again. And when my answer was no, his anger was inspired again. But that's not the moral of the story. The thing was, once I forgave him, I meant it. I didn't just say it, I meant it. Because I couldn't stay there in that anger and resentment, upset about what he had done, living in the past, bringing that on to other men who came along, not trusting anybody because of what he had done. People told me I was stupid for talking to him or even agreeing to meet with him, and maybe I was. But I felt that when I decided to walk down that aisle in church and give my life over to God through Christ, I was immediately put to the test. Could I forgive someone who may not deserve it? Who hadn't been punished for what he did, or at least as far as I could see. Never think that just because you don't see your enemy's punishment that God is not messing with them or, or, or in their lives. But could I forgive someone who had hurt me so deeply? But then I remembered the Christ that I said I would follow. And I remembered him as he hung from the cross suffering. Not suffering in anger like he should have been, but suffering in love. And he asked of God to forgive them for they did not know what they were doing which I think meant they did not realize the enormity of their sin because they had to know they were doing wrong, but I don't think they realized how badly they were messing up. And I thought to myself, Jesus didn't get an apology, not from the Romans who tortured him and hung him on the cross. Not from the church leaders who continually challenged him. And when they couldn't defeat him, they lied and they schemed until they finally got him arrested and condemned. Jesus didn't get an apology from Judas who betrayed him or from Peter who denied him. Not from the disciples who deserted him. Nor from the bystanders who stood silently by while he was crucified for their sins. So I guess if Jesus could do it for me, how could I not do it for him? <laughs> when we forgive, then and only then can we be forgiven. You get what you give. It's not about who's right or wrong. If it was, it would be easy. But faith, sometimes faith, is hard. But one thing I can guarantee you, it is always worth it. For Jesus assures us, forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. If you want kindness, give them some kindness. If you want forgiveness, give forgiveness. If you want generosity, then you've got to give. If you want kindness or trust or whatever it is, you've got to give that first. But the good thing to know is when you get it back, it's going to be even more. The message for today, brothers and sisters, you get what you give and more. Amen? So we're going to prepare for the invitation. And then we're going to go to communion. I want to say, this is me, I want to say. Because, you know, sometimes we know when we hurt people, don't we, Dr. Wells? We know. Other times you can offend some folk and you didn't mean to. 
Can you, you ever said something to somebody and you didn't realize they got mad at you? You had no idea what you were talking about. So you can offend somebody whether you do it on purpose or not. So I want to say, if I have ever done anything to offend or hurt someone here at church or online, if I have ever done anything, to hurt somebody, if your feelings have been hurt by me, charge it to my head and not my heart. I didn't mean to, but please forgive me because that wasn't my intention. And watch this. For the hurt and offense that I have received from some folk, and you know who you are <laughs> because there are some of those. Every pastor got some folk who have said or done some things to them that were mean and hurtful. For anything that anybody has done to me, I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. Because I'm not doing it just for me. I'm doing it for him. Because if I don't let it go, then he got crucified for no reason. So I have to say that what he did for me was worth it, and therefore I have to do it for everybody else. So when you come forward for communion, I want you to think. Go through those Rolodexes and rewind those tapes. There's not a person in here who has not been wronged by somebody that you are probably, if you saw them again, you got it in your head. People that you avoid, don't want to sit next to, don't want to be on the same committee with them, don't want to hold their hand to pray, certainly don't want to see them again. Or some people feel that way about you because of something you might have said or done that you're sorry for now. So I would encourage you to go to that person as soon as you can and apologize to them. I would encourage you to forgive somebody where they apologize to you or not. Because when we receive the body and blood of Jesus, we receive it believing that he died for our sins and for the sins of everyone. So God takes care of that judgment. All we have to do is forgive. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the kingdom are open. If there's one who is yet to get their life over to God through Christ. The doors of the church are open. Don't let me scare you off by what happened to me. I, you know, so, something can happen to you as soon as you do it. Do know that test will come up, but don't let it stop you. Anybody, doors of church are open. If you're looking for a church home, we offer Christ. If you're in need of prayer, we'll do that with you also. Is there one? Is there one? I want you to think when I say the invitation of Jesus, you might say, I'm already saved. But if you're saved and you're holding on to something you shouldn't be holding on to, now is the time to give it up. So that you can do from your seats. And, and, and look at it this way. You know, nobody, nobody knows what's in your heart. You can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can never fool. You can never fool God any of the time. So ask like David did, God, search my heart. Search my heart. And if there's anything in me that's getting in the way of my walk and my witness, if there's anything in me that is preventing me from being able to live right and do right, if there's anything in me that, that, that I don't know about, if I, I think I'm good, but you're saying, point it out, Lord. And purge it from me. Remove it. Because I don't want to, anything to get in the way of our relationship. I want you to walk with me and talk with me. And tell me that I'm your own. I don't want to feel far away from you. I want to feel close to you. And I know in order to do that, I have to be living according to your will. That's the invitation of Jesus. Is there one? Is there one? Okay, then let us pray.
Lord, as we're gathered here right now, we've heard the words that you've said to your people. Let us not just hear them, Lord, but do them also. Lord, we ask your forgiveness that anything that we have done that has not been pleasing in your sight, sins of commission or omission, things that we should have done that we haven't, things we wish we would have done, things that we did that we know we shouldn't have, things we've done on purpose, things that we had no idea. Lord, bring them to our remembrance. Touch each and every, every person gathered here and let them know as they lift these things up that if they're willing to give them over to you, tell them they are forgiven. They are forgiven. They are forgiven. We are forgiven. Grace and mercy abounds. We thank you for that amazing grace, Lord, that saved a wretch like me. And that you save us each and every day. Remind us of that, Lord, that we don't have to go out the same way that we came in. Touch us deep in our hearts. Remind us of who we are so that we will walk in the newness of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. With that, we know that prayer does change things. So we want to lift up. Before I lift up anything, thank you. I don't know who wrote this, but I, I did mean to do this. We were going to send out a one call to remind you all that Election Day is coming up on May 3rd. Early voting was going on even today. Um, but our one call, we didn't have enough minutes to send out a reminder. So I wanted to be sure to remind you to vote. Vote uh, May 3rd is the last day. Um, check for your poll locations. And pray. And I bring it up right now during the prayer because we need prayer over the polls. We need prayer over the people. We need prayer over the redlining. We need prayer over all of the things that are going on in our nation that we have a voice for. Lord, guide us to vote and make a difference where we can. We lift up a uh, happy heavenly birthday to my son, Jermaine Daniels, 501 of 1970 to December 1995. Happy birthday. Amen. We're celebrating birthdays. Even though, they're not, though he's not with us, he's still with us. Amen. And most of all, he's with our father. Lifting up Sister Jerry Thompson, who's recovering um, oh, who is recovering. I spoke with her on Friday, and she is doing better. She's getting stronger every day. I want to continue to lift her up because her, oh, her friend, I want to say Nicole. Lord, you know what the name was. Uh, one of her neighbors that takes care of her is having uh, ear surgery on this Monday. So we want to lift her up, let her know she is being prayed for and praying that the surgery goes well. Um, but she's somebody who helps Sister Jerry. So we're just praying for the neighbors that are always there for her. She said she's well taken care of. So we just want to lift her up, lift up Sister Nicole and her surgery. Brother Nelson, Sto Brother Nelson Stone that has won the fight with cancer for over eight years. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Lifting up Willie Allen. Mrs. Dees and Natasha Norville. You all forgive me, I'm trying. And Sister Ethel Smith. Lifting up prayers for the Lakes family as we heard of the loss of a young person from their family this morning. A young father and husband. Giovanni Chappelle. Also want to mention about that is that Kathy and I has been at being parents for neighborhood folks in Trotwood for many years. And this young man, he had a heart that was big as gold. And we watched him grow and mature from college, playing college football and, and stuff like that. And this morning was just a blow. It's just so close to Kathy and I right now. I, I just don't have the words to really say what I want to say. but. This young man, we, we helped raise him with goodness and stuff like that. Yes. And for whatever reason, he passed away. We just want to ask prayers for everybody to pray for his soul that it be saved, forgiveness for whatever is going on in his life. We don't have a clue. 
So we just ask for prayers. Amen. Amen. That's just a reminder. We don't know the day or the hour. A lot of people think, okay, I've got a lot of time. You don't know how much time you have. So take advantage of every minute that you have. I want to lift up the, fi uh, the family of Michael Johnson. He was my big brother in ministry. He passed away this past, uh, this past week. And um, this robe that I wear today was his gift to me when I was first ordained. He said, you, you got a black robe, the one that's for my father. He said, you don't have a white robe, do you? He said, no. I said, no. He said, you got to have a white robe. And he bought me this robe. So I just want to lift up the Johnson family. <sighs> Prayers for Geraldine, <clears throat> Geraldine Stark. Her, her time is... Sister Linda, I can't read it. I'm going to ask you to lift this up. Okay, her time is about up. She has either one, maybe two days or less. She could be gone now because her body is shutting down. She's doing any, there guys, she's still in hospice care. And when uh, I went out there Thursday to see her and she was just laying there. And she did open her eyes and look up at me and I talked to her and I prayed with her. But her family said that the hospice people said she's on limited time now. She's about gone. And like I said, right now, she could be gone now. You know. So okay. please pray for her. Girl is my best friend. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now you all know there's two things here. One is what people say. It's up to God, right? It's always up to God. But we all have to go at some point. We come in this tent. We don't come to stay. So we don't run from death. But it's hard for those that are left behind. So we lift up Sister Geraldine and get, ask that the Lord just walk with her and give her peace during this time. Bless her family. Bless her friend. Bless our sister in Christ. And we pray for her right now. We pray for God to wrap his arms around her. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Pray for my success and completion of upcoming training, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. every Saturday and Sunday for the month of May. This comes from Brother Bobby. This is for peer recovery support specialist. Amen. Amen. We got you, Brother Bobby. And we'll be thinking about you when you're not here. Amen. But we know that you're doing an incredible work. From Brother Carlos, I would like prayer for my church in Honduras and for my family and me. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Uh, James wants me to just say how happy he is to be a church, how much he enjoys the music, enjoys the sermons the pastor gives. And I'd also like to give thanks for Sister Dominique's rendition of In the Garden today. Uh, that was my mom's favorite song, and she sang it almost every day at the nursing home. And when I leave at night, she'd be scared, and I always told her, remember, Mom, that God walks with you, and he talks with you, and he tells you that you are his own. And you've been a good and faithful servant. And so, Dominique, thank you so much. That was just beautiful. Amen. Amen. Love you. Love you all. Brother James, thank you. Always so good to see you. Anyone else? Good morning. Good morning. I just want to thank everyone who's supported us. And... We're going to have this walk in memory of my daughter. This is something that my granddaughter wants to do for her mother. She graduated from Central State. She was a dedicated sister from Central State. She, she played in the band. So what, what her daughter wants to do is just have people to come out and just have a memory walk for her mother. And if anybody wants to donate for the cause, the money will go to Central State. It's Mighty Marauders. We're going to start at 11 o'clock. And by the first parking lot, by the, uh, the tennis court. So 
I thank you all. I love you. I thank you. We love you too. Oh, I'm sorry. It's going to be uh, May the 7th at Dewey's Park. Amen. And my daughter, my granddaughter said that we're supposed to have rain all next week. So, but I told her, you know, we don't know what God's going to do. So, all right. Thank you. And, and, and even if it rains, I think we can still walk. Is that not so? Now, ladies, I know we got to do something with the hair, but that's okay. <laughs> Bring your umbrella. Anyone else? Uh, yes, uh, I'm, I, I, my heart goes out to all of you who have uh, spoken um, of your situations. I'm so sorry about it, and you're, you're in my heart. And, um, I just want to also, on another note, uh, my um, husband has um, recovered um, from his um, cancers and things, and I want to thank the church. Wait a minute, you said he's what now? Recovering. Um, he's cancer free? Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah! And that's, I'm, Look, you got to say that louder than that. I, <laughs> hallelujah, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, uh, we've gone through so much, and I just want to thank the church. Um, God has a funny way of bringing you in to his house, and through this with my husband, it brought me here. That's just one of the ways. And, and I'm so thankful and so grateful. And, and it got me to join the church. I'm, I'm so excited about that. I have a home now. Amen. And I have, I have a home. Amen. And I have friends around me and everything. And I just love all of you. And I can continue to, <laughs> thank you. I can continue to play my drums with uh, <laughs> Brother Bobby there. And, uh, I just want to say thank you to all of you. And Sister Dominique, you know, I, that song was really touching. Thank you. Thank you so Amen. much. And, and the whole the choir, all of you guys, thank you so much. Just wanted to say that, guys, and I love you all. Thank uh -huh. you. Uh -huh. And thank you, Sister Donna, for all of the youth that got those incredible Easter baskets. Amen. Those were donated by Sister Donna Wilborn. I said donated. <laughs> And they were nice ones. They're bigger, they're better than anything you get over at you know, Walmart, Kroger, or something like that. They were beautiful Easter baskets. And the most of all, they were made with love. Amen. Anyone else? I just want to thank God. I don't know if this is a praise report or anything, and she doesn't know that I'm doing this, but um, Sister Jessica sent me a card and flowers for, I want to say it was professional, administrative, something I didn't even know existed. <laughs> But I really, really appreciated it. And she didn't know, but that day, I, you know, you, sometimes you can just get into the, the routine of things or just kind of feel like maybe you're not doing a good enough job. And so when, uh, when she sent me those flowers, Sister Jan was there too. And I was like, what? No way. Like, <laughs> I mean, I've gotten flowers with Cam, my family, but that was just so sweet. And you never know what people are going through or what a, a, a kind gesture can mean. There's never anything too small that you can do for, for someone to show love, to show kindness. And so I just wanted to really tell her how much I appreciated her and just encourage you all um, to pass that love on and, and try to do that for people when you can. Amen. Amen. Let's do that right now. Brother Marcus, stand up. Sister Q, Sister Dominique. Brother Al, wave your hand if you can in between. I want to thank this praise team. Bro oh, Brother Bobby, how could I not? Faithful, faithful, faithful. Three voices that sound like 10 voices. Faithful. Musicians that sound like an entire band, and that includes Sister Donna when she's play playing, playing too. Thank you. I mean, you know, it's like people say, well, that's their job to do that. No, they come with a wonderful heart. They come and they put in hours that you know nothing about. They come when it's hot outside as we're about to go outside. They come and they serve. So I just wanted to thank them. There'll be more than just the trio once we move outside, but I wanted to thank them. And Sister Anastasia that's sitting there sometimes playing the bass. I just wanted to thank them. And I want to thank up there in the balcony, the AV people. Brother Ivy's not there today, but Sister Jessica, Sister Indigo, Brother Cameron. Some people are like, who's, who's Brother Cameron? That, that, that's Sister Dominique's beloved. <laughs> and he's up, he comes from Columbus and helps out with the AV. For our ushers, for our ushers, raise your hand, ushers. 
We have needed ushers, and they come. They serve, you know, they really only have to supposed to serve like one or two, twice a year because we have so many, but we don't have so many. So they continue to come and serve and serve. We need, we need each and every one of you, but I just want to thank those that are just doing, and I can't even mention that you, I should, <laughs> can't mention how many things some of you that here in the pews do. Amen. So just thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you, Brother George, for the translation. Love you all. Love you. We don't know if we're going to see each other tomorrow. We don't know if we'll see each other next Sunday. So I just want to say, well, you know, they said give people their flowers while they can smell them and while they can see them. So I love you all. I appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Sister Carol? This past couple of years has been a lot of doctor's appointments. And all three of us had doctor's appointments this week. But I'm happy to report um, Shannon got cleared of cancer also. We don't have to go back for six months for another scan. My heart scan came back good. I looked at my report and it said calcium zero. And I'm like, calcium zero? He said, no, that's perfect. You can't do any better than that zero. <laughs> So all my tests came out well. Mom did really well, so I have a lot to give thanks for. I also am asking for prayer. My aunt um, lost her husband a few years ago, and she's had a neighbor that she's really had a great relationship with, that holidays with. She passed. And so I want to give thanks for all those caregivers, those neighbors, those people in the community that will make a call Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you for all who have helped us and have prayed for us and keep us in your prayers. Amen. Amen. Oh, one more thing. Shannon may or may not have surgery this week. It is all going to depend on how her tests come out and how she's doing and what the doctors say. But prayers for her. If she does have the surgery, let it be successful. Amen. You. Amen. You all share those testimonies because when we've been lifting people up, a lot of times, get, you know, we just hear seems like a lot of bad news upon bad news or bad news. And then when it happens, you know, tell it, tell it, shout it from the rooftops because people need to know the fervent, effective, effectual prayers of the righteous availeth much. As we pray, God is blessing. Not that God doesn't want to bless anyway, but it's the prayers of the saints that, that, that touches God and reaches him where he is. So we just praise God and thank God. For, the, for these successes, these testimonies. And we pray that things go well with Sister Shannon if she, if she does have to have surgery this week. Anyone else as Dr. Williams comes to pray? You all pray for my family as we'll head to uh, Asbury North in Columbus for the home going of Michael Johnson on Thursday. We just pray that, uh, I can't tell you how many people he's touched, um, but that's the way that, that's the way to live. Leave it all on the floor. Leave behind so many people that are touched that they can't help but come out and just, just, just give their respects for what you've done. Don't be a whisper on the earth. Be something that everybody will remember. Live life to its fullest. And then when it's time for you to get called home, you'll run into God's hands because there's nothing left for you to do. You can say like Jesus, it is finished. Yes, Pastor, before we offer prayer, I would just like to ask for prayer. I will not be here on May the 15th, as I am normally scheduled. I will be doing a blessing of the bikers and the bikes in Beaver Creek, and we're looking that it's going to be anywhere between two to 300 bikers. Amen. So it'll be at the time of this service, so please... We would like to have your heart of prayers with us at that activity. We appreciate it much. We Let want us to continue to lift up the family of Sister Maria and Sister Delphina for their mother who's going through um, cancer and hopefully that that treatment will be successful for her. And, uh, and all of the other people on the screens that uh, chronic illness and people that we just want to lift up for peace in, in the world and in our communities. Let us now go to the throne. Dear God, you've heard our petitions. You've heard our gratitudes. And you've heard our confessions that all these blessings 
to you and to you only be the glory. Your healing spirit and encouragement, the Holy Spirit falls upon us. We ask that that Holy Spirit continue to linger, to continue with not only the prayers of the needs, but also the gratitudes for fulfilled prayer. We come before you, maybe not on physical bended knees, but on spiritual bended knees, where you would have us, where you want us. And as we come to this table, let us come with the spirit of our prayers in our hearts. At this table, we will lay down burdens. We will lay down the issues of our lives and renew our souls and our spirits with the spiritual food that your son left behind. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As the table is prepared, won't you participate with the reading of the Apostles' Creed as we're reminded of the things, just some of the things, but the basic tenets of faith of which we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. You all, I know I have a mic, but I need to hear you. Come on now. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from which he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In that reminder that when we say the Holy Catholic or Catholic Church, that is the universal church. It is not a denomination. There are den no denominations in heaven. Amen? All right. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at table in the kingdom of God. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast of which he has prepared. Blessed is Jesus Christ, our Savior. Jesus showed us what it means to love with your heart and soul and mind and strength and how to love our neighbors as ourselves. Remembering your goodness and grace, we offer ourselves to you with gratitude as we share this joyful feast. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and cup. Make us one in the body and blood of Christ our Lord. Lead us to that holy place, not made with human hands, where Christ our Savior has offered himself for our redemption and where we may live to worship you forever. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Spirit, we bless you, God of glory, now and forever. And now, let us pray for God's will to be done on earth as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen for those that are visiting we are not partaking yet But we go through the demonstration of what Jesus did on the night that he gave himself for us.
The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you and for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. Now we invite you to take more time than it probably took in the actual supper to open your cups. If you're able to get it out, we ask you to raise it up. This may seem like just bread, just a wafer, but through faith, it truly is for us, the body of Christ, sacrificed for us on Calvary. Remember, when we receive it, we receive grace, mercy, forgiveness. So as you take it, remember that you have to give it back out. Take and eat and do so in remembrance of him. This cup, through faith, becomes the blood of Jesus, poured out for us and for the sins of many. It is the essence of life, an eternal life. Remember, as you receive it, all that you get is what you give back. Drink and do so in remembrance of him. Won't you pray with us? Most bountiful God, we give you thanks for the world you have created and for the gift of life and for giving yourself to us in Jesus Christ, whose holy life, suffering and death and glorious resurrection have delivered us from sin and death. We are your children, and yours is the glory, now and forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. And Amen. Amen. And I should have asked, forgive me if, I, if anyone has been missed. Was there anyone missed? It's never too late to receive the cup. Did everyone receive? All right, then I think we have a charge to give and to keep, a closing hymn. We are reminded that for those that would like to stay behind, um, we are going to have a, have a talk with uh, Brother George Brown in the Fellowship Hall. Um, for those involved in the Hispanic ministry, we invite you um, following service to join us in the Fellowship Hall. Remember um, that... Uh, the next time you come, well, let's, let's, next week is at Zion Baptist Church. At what time? 1130. 1130. All right, Mother's Day, Zion Baptist Church, 1130. When we come back, every, uh, every pew might be full as we are beginning to uh, stretch ourselves out a little bit more. Stay safe, keep your masks on, but open things up to be sure that we can make more room in the sanctuary. Amen. Okay, you are the people of the resurrection. Amen. You know the power, the powerful love of God. Go into God's world with proclaiming hope, peace, joy, in the name of the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Ustedes son personas de la resurrección. 
conocen el poderoso amor de Dios y al mundo de Dios proclamando esperanza, paz y gozo. En el nombre de Jesús, en el nombre del Señor resucitado. Amén. 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 And remember as you prepare to go from this place never from the presence of God, don't forget to vote. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole heart and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In, name, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, go with God and in the new life of Christ as Easter people. Every morning is Easter morning from now on. Every day, resurrection day, the past is over and gone. Goodbye, dear, goodbye, dear, good friend. Hello, Lord, hello, son. I am one of the Easter people. Life is not to be gone. Every morning is Easter morning from now on. Sure.